Yeah, I love Small Business Saturday. As you said, half the people who work in this country own or work for a small business. And it's really become a bit of a movement. It's time to go downtown uh, to your main street and get a coffee and buy something and show support for the community. This is now a worldwide phenomenon. I was in London and the, met the head of Small Business Saturday. And I said, well, how do you have Small Business Saturday, you don't have Thanksgiving, but they take a whole Saturday in December and they devote it to this. So it's one of the few new small business brands that has come up. I think small business will have a really strong day. You actually see a lot of small businesses taking out loans. There's new online loans. Amazon is now lending to its, its small business um, retailers in order to have them get the inventory that they need for the holidays. So I think it's a pretty strong small business story right now. But as you know, whenever there's a recession, 10 years ago, you, can, you can't forget how tough it is for small business when things go bad. The, the, the financing for small businesses, it costs, you know, as far as traditional lenders, uh, they don't like to do it that much because they, it doesn't, you know, they, the cost of underwriting a small loan uh, doesn't really scale like larger ones. So who steps up? Where, where are we right now? Is it if you want to do this, can you find financing for it, or, or do we still need uh, some innovation here? Well, technology has really changed the game in small business lending, and we are just at the opening of a huge transformation. Um, so I just wrote a book that's coming out in the spring. It's called FinTech Small Business and the American Dream because we're going to see things change completely. Already we have FinTechs, we have Amazon, we have PayPal making loans. Square is making loans, $7,000 loans. A bank can't make any money with bricks and mortar trying to make a $7,000 loan. So when they saw the challenges come up, the JP Morgans of the world have woken up. They're investing in a better customer experience. You know, a small business preparing for Small Business Saturday can't wait three months to get an inventory loan. So now they've got this sort of uh, online loan within minutes. One of the things I've been working on uh, in Washington, Olympia Snow and I chaired something for the Small Business um, Main Street Task Force of the Bipartisan Policy Center. New regulation has to encourage innovation, but also protect small businesses. So as we get financial service regulatory reform, we set out a whole list of things to make sure small businesses know what they're paying and that we clean up some of the regulatory overlap so we can have more innovation. The world is going to change for small business for the better with technology, hey, but there's also risks. Karen, um, you're at a bipartisan uh, organization now, but you did work for, for President Obama in, as uh, uh, as an administrator of the uh, the SBA, the SBA, do you have a do you have a, a, a feeling on what a fifteen dollar an hour national minimum wage would do to small businesses? Would, is that something that you would uh, be a proponent for, or, or it just seems like that might be problematic for you know across the entire country whether you could pay that in, in a lot of places. You know, I'm a big proponent of the $15 wage, and the data is supportive of this. We took a long look at this, and the evidence now, as you start to see states adopt it, is that you're not seeing small businesses suffer. You actually see additional growth in markets that have adopted this. So I think that's really a red herring. And what small businesses tell me is they want their employees to stay with them. They want to provide them health care. It's like a family in a small business. So they need to be able to um, not be undercut by a competitor. If they want to pay $15 and the competitor isn't, it's hard for them. So I actually think this is a positive and the data supports that. Right now, I think there's a, a lot of, I'm actually at Harvard Business School and I spend a little bit of time uh, with a bipartisan policy center because small business is a bipartisan issue. And we can get a lot done right now in regulatory reform and in helping small businesses get access to capital. If uh, maybe that should be the agenda of the new Congress because it's a place that, you know, Americans believe. And as you said, it's half the economy, it's half the jobs.
Pro, you don't think that in, on Main Street in, in Binger, Oklahoma, if they are forced to pay $15 an hour, you don't think anyone, do you, think, do you agree with that? Do you? Um, what I really, I'm not a big proponent of the minimum wage, but right now $15 an hour is already the minimum wage because Amazon set it about three weeks ago. So I don't think it would matter That's very right. much now if in fact we did have a minimum wage of 15 bucks because I think we're there. But I do think once you start raising the minimum wage, let's say we made it 20 bucks, you'd see people losing jobs and you'd see things happen, right? But if you're just keeping up with where the world is, I don't think it matters very much. And I think we're at a $15 minimum wage the day Amazon Dana. made that announcement. Yeah. I think over, and when, you, when you're looking at small businesses overall, any categories you're seeing growing or shrinking? Right now, across small businesses, some of the uh, ones who trade are feeling some of the effects of these tariffs. And I think it remains to be seen. I'm from Maine. You know, the independent lobstermen in Maine are really suffering from uh, some of the restrictions. So I think we have to be careful about small businesses. The traded sector is pretty fragile. Uh, Main Street, that goes up and down depending on the consumer and the economy. So in a downturn, once again, we got to make sure that they're protected. Uh